as a dancer, I always wore colorful clothes and I never really had a lot of money or like I didn't want to spend my money on a lot of things because I could dance, spend more time dancing instead of working, <laughs> to be honest. But I've chosen this path, right? I could work harder. I could work harder. I got some bootstraps, let me tell you. And I pulled them up before <laughs> when I had children and then did things I didn't want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And made a lot of things just to make them because I made money making them. But I have made enough things and sold them that it wasn't, it's not such a risk anymore, if that makes any sense. When we got our first piece of furniture in a permanent museum collection, the Racine Museum of Art, and we delivered it, and the, the director was there and he was thanking us. And uh, he was like, the big question is, um, if you didn't sell it, would you still make it? You know, and that is like the thousand dollar question for any artist. And and I think really people who are what it would, I would think is the true artist is people who are compelled to do it. They just can't, you know, like they just, they love making something and they just keep making it. And art is about fabricating no matter what it is. We were lucky enough to be taken with just sculptural objects to a show. There was a gallery in Chicago that represented our work. When we first did it, uh, the glass artist Dale Chihuly was represented by a, a Western Massachusetts gallery that had them there. And they had an installation that ran down the center. It was 20 feet wide and 40 feet long and it sold for just over a million dollars to a home. Here in North America, I'm not sure where it went, but the gallery that told us they were like, uh, anything that's over $30,000, you know, because we split it, it had to be that high of a number. And I, I loved being there and having that work there. It was incredible, but you only surfaced the 1%. They were the only people who would really come. But anyhow, at that point in my craft, I realized I really want to do something more that really touches many more people and then get really to the core of, of, of us as humans. I started thinking about the cultural change I was really interested in, uh, just from being out in a younger scene in Portland because I'm a dancer. So to me, there was something even more magical about getting your work and then like sharing it. And usually when people wear our jewelry, it's just like, they get pretty darn excited about it. And especially if it's uh, more of one of the expensive pieces that took us more time, but was really has more voice. I had this idea about how I wanted to make clothing that would allow the wearer to present themselves from the inside and from the outside. And some ideas I've been playing with about how we transform the ability to share and be more vulnerable at the same time, be completely powerful. Because I think it's that true mix of vulnerability and complete confidence that makes the best empathetic person. Mm -hmm. So, and that's really kind of what I think um, I wanna try to invoke. And it's a long road to trying to do that because clothing is fraught. The ideas behind what I'm making here and that I'm sharing with you now is, uh, we're, just, we're just kind of describing it as everyday artwear. And the idea is we wanna kind of break through some of the traditional stereotypes of how we dress and how we look at each other too. Because I feel like culturally across the board, and it doesn't really matter where you're from or what the style of dress you have, but the whoever the overriding power is, whether it's religious or government, or and it could be military or dictators, they're gonna kind of like, this is my team, this is my, this is my group, and they're going to all dress like this, and that's how we separate and divide and conquer. And I wanted to try to start making that a conversation in couture, in fashion even. I'm not sure it's going to be something the fashion industry will ever want to talk about, but this isn't work necessarily, or a conversation for industry. It's more a conversation for people. It was, that was enough for me. And then I never really thought about real fashion. And I, as I commented, I, I can make incredible things, but if only the, the most wealthy people, and I've met incredibly beautiful, amazing wealthy people, but there's still something wrong with it. There's still something wrong with such incredible wealth and such poverty still. So we don't know how the world turns intimately, each of us, unless you're in those worlds, but I do believe in the goodness of all of us in the end. So I figure, all right, how do we join in? <laughs> um, but at the same token, if anyone, if you guys have ever been in any sort of business, you realize that, wow, the nature of what business is in humanity has never changed and will, m will most likely never change what it means to be a market economy, if you like, or like you live the world as a market-based thing. It's like, you, sh you know, you didn't, Get your, you brought the money changers back into the temple, guys.
I couldn't manage that in my mind's eye any longer over all these years. And I would turn a blind eye, to be honest, all the in the middle of my life because I raised children. If I hadn't raised children, I think I would have come to this work much sooner because I wouldn't have palleted uh, just so much work that way rather than trying to do more to, to be in this world now and perhaps even make a difference. I mean, I think art is invaluable, but I think in the moment, there might be revolutionary art that makes a difference, but I don't believe in revolution either. I, I really would much rather it be an evolution. So the value that art will have will be known later. You know, it'll be, it'd be 10 years, 20 years later, 30 years later. And I think that's something that if we could just have solace in, if at the very least as artists, and, and then, then, you know, if you can, if your ego can manage that, then your buddies, ah, oh, you could just ride along, ego, you'll be fine over here. Fear, you're here just doing fine. We're cool now, right? We don't have to worry anymore. As an artist, if you're not uh, open to your inspirations as they come to you, and especially if they're going and you keep feel like it's feeding something that's growing, then I, I, I worry I miss out. <laughs> Because though they're they're pretty magical, and when you feel it that deep, then you you usually are, you could pretty much trust. As you get to the end of your life, you really want to have meaning, and you see in the end, the most rewarding lives they made that true. You know, so let's hope for all of us that we make our lives that way. It's up to us, like it is up to us to love ourselves. So, it's a tough one. <laughs>